a very good afternoon to uh, everyone today we will be uh, today we will be talking on a very important and a pertinent topic that is uh, cancer pain and uh, <clears throat> today is another of alleviate's webinar series uh, the topic for today is uh, cancer pain and uh, the quote below says that pain is inevitable but suffering is optional I am Dr. Khaja Javed Khan. I'm a consultant uh, pain physician at Alleviate Pain Management Clinics. So uh, we would be going through in another few minutes about cancer pain, just uh, understanding what is cancer pain, what are the various causes, and uh, what are the various options uh, which patients have in the management of pains from cancer. So this is uh, going to be the overview of my presentation. The introduction followed by cancer pain, a few common questions which most people have in their mind with respect to cancer pain and their answers, the different management options for cancer pain followed by the conclusion. So let's have a look at the introduction. Remember cancer associated pain is the most debilitating part of the cancer itself. So even though uh, cancer affects different parts of the body, the patients can have varied amount of symptoms, but uh, can the pain which is associated with cancer is one of the most debilitating part and uh, one of the most difficult things which a patient has to endure. The problem uh, with cancer pain is there is a lack of effective treatment options. That is the reason why most of the people had to live with the cancer pain or bear the cancer pain. But the good thing now is the recent developments in the field of pain medicine have been a great help and a ray of hope for patients suffering from cancer related pains. All right, so let's have a look at cancer pain, a few common questions and I would be answering them. So one question which people have in their mind is how uh, can pain affect people with cancer or uh, people who suffer from cancer, what kind of pains can they have? <clears throat> so remember, pain can affect most of the individuals suffering from cancer. There are a few cancers wherein the cancer pain is could be mild, depending on the stage that uh, the patient is in. And uh, remember, the cancer pain is one thing which can involve any part of the body. By this, I mean, even if a patient, for example, has a lung cancer, the patient can manifest with pain in the different parts of the body as well. Next question is, can cancer pain be relieved? Well, let's look at the answer to this question. See, cancer pain may not always be completely relieved, but the important fact here is it can still be managed. It can be controlled and made as less as possible. There's nothing called 100% of pain relief, right? Especially in the uh, patient suffering from cancer and the various cancer pains. The important thing over here is uh, to decrease the patient's suffering and pain as much as possible and improve their quality of life. Next question is, what causes the pain in people with cancer? Well, there could be a lot of causes. One very important cause is the cancer itself. The cancer itself <clears throat> can uh, manifest in the form of a tumor, can press on nerves, bones, different organs, leading to the formation of pain. Now, patients undergoing treatment for cancers could be surgical treatment or any other form of uh, treatment, and then the various tests and investigations which the patient has to endure, the, this can all lead to the various kinds of pain. Now, surgical pain. Anyone undergoing surgery will understand that, you know, uh, there is uh, the post-surgical pain, which is an acute pain, which anyone undergoing surgery has to endure. And especially in patients, with uh, cancer, uh, it can be a lot of uh, problem where you know already their uh, immune system is uh, 
compromised and uh, the problem is that uh, their pain their, the nerves become so sensitive that uh, you know it becomes a lot of difficulty for them next is the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy and its various side effects uh so what happens many uh, patients undergo chemotherapy uh radiotherapy they are a form of treatment for patients suffering from cancer but uh, there are the side effects which people have to know so what are the various side effects one is patients can develop certain symptoms like pain burning tingling numbness weakness clumsiness unusual sensations in the hands arms legs or feet etc peripheral neuropathy is a certain condition which can develop peripheral neuropathy can have the above symptoms what i just spoke of now and it occurs due to nerve damage when caused by chemotherapy it's specifically referred to as chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy mouth sores or ulcers when the chemotherapy can cause these things in the mouth and the throat region uh the pain can cause the people to have difficulty in eating drinking and even talking so you can imagine the difficulties with the patient goes so next is radiation mucositis and other injuries pain from the radiotherapy depends on which part is undergoing radiotherapy uh, it could manifest side effects could manifest as skin burns mouth sores or mucositis scarring all of which can cause pain the throat intestine urinary bladder are also prone to radiation injury and uh, the patient is subject to various tests investigations procedures minimally invasive ones the tests etc so from that also the patient has to endure pain now let's have a look at a very important question what are some reasons for patients not receiving the adequate or required treatment for cancer pain well one is the patients are hesitant reluctant to talk about their pains next is there is a an extreme lack of awareness regarding the various treatment options for cancer pain also among many of the medical professionals there is a lack of awareness and also a fear which the patients have with respect to opioids many of them know that you know uh, the treatment for cancer pain is uh, through the help of uh, opioids which are a class of drugs and many of them fear that they might get addicted to these medications if they uh, start taking their pain and they prefer to live their life in pain so moving ahead let's have a look at the various cancer pain management options so here you are seeing the cancer cell as i said the cancer can be in any location but the pain can be in a totally different location as well this is because the nerves around they get sensitized now what is sensitization sensitization is a process whereby the nerve becomes res- very very responsive or very sensitive to a normal stimulus right and uh, that is the forerunner cause for Uh, chronic pain in cancer patients i would say there is definitely hope for people suffering from cancer related uh, pain and uh, i will be talking about the various recent advances which help patients manage their cancer related pain so for management of pain the world health organization the who has proposed a three step pain ladder pattern now the first step is uh, wherein the pain is persisting not being managed there in uh, we start with non opioids by non opioids we mean medications like paracetamol anti inflammatory like nsaids etc adjuvants would include anti convulsants or anti depressants so if pain is being managed uh, with these then fair enough if not we have to go to the next step so if pain is still persisting or increasing even after using first step we have to go in for opioids mild opioids could be tramadol could be codeine etc for management of mild to moderate pain and the 
uh, non opioids and adjuvants are still going to be there as a part of the management coming to the third stage wherein we are going to uh, see wherein pain is still not being managed uh, that time we have to go in for a bit of stronger opioids the stronger opioids mean um, morphine so this is for moderate to severe pain and the non opioid then adjuvants are going to be there now recently another step has been added uh, to this which is the fourth step and uh, it's for patients for whom pain is not being managed even with moderate to severe opioids as well it's wherein the interventions come in the pain management interventions which i would be uh, speaking in the future slides so medical management is going to be the initial one wherein we are going to use paracetamol anti inflammatories the anti convulsants the anti depressants etc still uh, if not reducing with this we have to follow the step ladder pattern and the most important medication is morphine so morphine has been the biggest ray of hope for patients suffering from cancer related pain and uh, it is uh, used of course there is no uh, maximum dose for morphine right you have to keep you can keep increasing the dose until the patient experiences any side effects and is not able to continue the medication so morphine comes in different strengths here you are seeing a 30 in the tablet comes in a 10 15 30 etc so as i said it's been a gold standard medication for management of uh, pains but uh, as i was talking in the wh step ladder as well just medications might not be sufficient so we might have to think of the next step that is the pain management interventions as well so let's have a look at uh, the different pain management interventions which help patients suffering from cancers of stomach pancreas are quite common and this leads to development of upper abdominal pain so for management of these kind of pains what could be the various interventions one is something called as splanchnic nerve radio frequency ablation or rf remember the splanchnic we have the uh, splanchnic nerve supply which takes the pain signals from the upper abdominal region uh, t5 to t12 almost greater lesser and least splanchnic nerves right so here you are seeing me doing a uh, splanchnic nerve block this was a patient who was suffering from pancreatic cancer severe pain uh, not being managed with uh, medications i think so we decided to go ahead with the splanchnic nerve block here you are seeing me doing a splanchnic nerve block this is a fluoroscopic guided approach where we are doing the splanchnic nerve block this is the needle going in in uh, tunnel vision this you can see is the t12 vertebra usually done at both t20 11 and t12 vertebra bilateral this is the bilateral two needles in the lateral view. this is in the ap all right patient suffering from chronic gastric cancers or stomach cancer celiac plexus block has been a boon and uh, it has been one of the treatment options which has been able to provide uh, help usually neurolysis is done either with alcohol or phenol now coming to patients suffering from cancers of the head and neck region for them we have options like the steroid ganglion block this is the fluoroscopic guided approach for the steroid ganglion block a lot of patients can develop secondary complications like trigeminal neuralgia as well leading to severe shooting and stabbing pain electric shock like all across the face so for patients coming in with trigeminal neuralgia we do something called as trigeminal uh, radio frequency ablation so this is a patient suffering from severe trigeminal neuralgia and uh, me doing the radio frequency ablation so here we have the foramen oval the needle going in here again you can see it clearly the foramen oval and the needle going in this is the lateral view junction of the petrous part of temporal bone and the clavus now let's look at for patients of suffering from cancer pain affecting the upper limbs what are the different options of course steroid ganglion block can also uh, help a patient suffering from pain in the upper limbs as well 
the T2 T3 sympathetic block is being a new addition and it is shown great response for patients who are suffering from this kind of things. Now for patients suffering from uh, cancer pain affecting the lower limbs, let's have a look at what are various options. We have something called as a lumbar sympathetic block. Now, lumbar sympathetic, I can take the pain signals which are going down uh, again till the legs. So depending on which dermatomes are involved, we do the lumbar sympathetic block and we've done at L2, L3, L4, L5. Lastly, for patients suffering from cancer pain affecting the pelvic region, what are the various options? Something called the superior hypogastric plexus block. Usually, patients suffering from bladder cancer, chronic pelvic pain, they respond well to this. Something called as a ganglion impar block as well. This is for the perineal cancers, the rectal cancers. Uh, we do the ganglion impar block, either with block with local anesthetic steroid or even a radiofrequency ablation can also be done. Now, moving ahead, let's have a look for patients suffering from bone-related pain. I was talking to you even, uh, patients can have a deep, boring bone pain as well. So for them, certain procedures are there. It's called vertebroplasty. Remember, uh, many of the patients can suffer from conditions like the stress to the vertebra and compression fractures are very, very common, like as you're seeing in this slide. So what we do in vertebroplasty is it's a percutaneous technique wherein the in vertebroplasty, the bone cement is injected within the vertebral body with the help of specialized instruments. There's another technique called as kyphoplasty as well. It is almost similar. The only difference is once the device reaches the vertebral body, a balloon is inflated, right? And then the bone cement is going to be injected. It helps avoid the different complications which we face with vertebroplasty. All right then, uh, let's have a look at a few of the advanced interventions. The patients, you know, still not being managed with these kind of procedures. What are the various advanced interventions? Let's have a look. Something called as intrathecal pump. So as you're seeing in this diagram, this is the spinal column. Over here, we have the catheter inserted into the spinal column and the pump implanted under the skin. So this pump is going to be filled with a drug. Few drugs are approved like uh, morphine, uh, ziconotide, etc. And uh, these, the advantage of this is you can bypass the complications which uh, the patient can experience when taking the medication orally or by any other IV or IM route. So with this, what happens with this pump, the medication which is filled inside the pump, you know, uh, it is a sophisticated technology wherein the drug is delivered with the help of the catheter directly to the spinal column. So you can imagine that almost 300 times the oral dose can be reduced down and uh, the same amount of drug, a lesser amount of the drug can be utilized in the intrathecal pump. So this is used uh, for patients suffering from severe cancer pain because remember, whenever you're using medication, there are going to be side effects. And as I was saying, morphine, there is, even though there is no high dose limit, but the patient can start experiencing complications and the complications itself can lead to a lot of distress. Moving ahead to something called a spinal cord stimulation as well, wherein electrodes are placed close to the spinal cord and uh, it is one of the advanced procedure helping in patients with chronic pain conditions. So what you need to understand over here is pain management. It is uh, not a unidimensional approach. We always have to adopt a multi-dimensional approach in the management of these conditions. Palliative care is one such thing, uh, which is uh, palliation is what is going to help the patients. <clears throat> so let's have a look at what is palliative care in uh, cancer pain. So remember palliative care is symptom management of a chronic or life limiting illness. So palliative care, the goal of palliative care is to not cure the cancer is so not to cure the chronic illness but to manage the symptoms decrease the pain to such an extent that the patient can improve their quality of life there's something called as hospice care as well which is the 
comfort care at the end of life lastly uh, let's have a look at the end of life care this is very important so what does end of life care include see uh, it includes managing symptoms uh, you have to uh, you know respect the patient's wishes the patient's spiritual well being and the patient and the family as a whole are going to be given the importance so once for example there is an end of life uh, it is very important to you know uh, manage the bad news of the death of the individual and then support the family members as well so emotional support legal support and up to death care are all components of end of life care finally what you need to understand over here with cancer pain is it is not like any other simple pain here we have a lot of issues in the sense uh, we follow something called the biopsychosocial model the biological component the psychological component the spiritual component there these are various components of the pain which can affect the individual so basically we have a concept called as total pain total pain management is what is going to be the goal and uh, is what is very very pertinent and important in management of cancer of pain well to conclude i'd say the notion which people have in their mind especially with regard to cancer pain that i have to live with the pain is totally wrong you have a lot of options now and uh, cancer pain can be effectively managed also remember pain is inevitable but suffering is optional do make use of the various pain management options you have in the management of cancer related pain thank you very much for your patient hearing i hereby conclude my presentation